Did you know we have a Discord community through Patreon? When you support the work we do on How to ADHD, you get access to a global supportive community and other Patreon perks. If you'd like to join us, go to patreon.com slash how to ADHD. This is How to ADHD Rewind, where I go back and watch my favorite or your favorite videos that I've done. Hello, brains. React to them and sometimes update with new information. Come watch with me. Uh, I'm I'm very curious if I actually did the next video about the topic that I was going to do because now I want to watch that because that's where I'm at right now. Like, how do you rebuild routines when they all get disrupted? Because I did have decent routines for a while there, and now I don't. So now I want to watch the next video. But we'll do that the next video. Huh. <laughs> Today we're watching rebuilding routines because yeah, they tend to fall apart. <laughs> ah, they sigh. Hello brains. If you watched this video, you know how helpful routines can be. But as people with ADHD, we like to change things. Jobs, <laughs> cities, majors, you don't know me. and whenever we go through a big change, whatever routines we built for ourselves naturally get disrupted. But that's oh, okay. Boy. We will rebuild. Here are eight tips to help you rebuild your routines and get on with your life. One, keep what you know works. It can be tempting to start with a blank slate, but the less you change, the quicker you'll adjust to those changes. So anything you liked from your old routine that would still work with the new one, consider keeping. Yeah, keep what works. That's that's one of the things that stuck with me and it made it into the book actually. Um, don't start from scratch. It can be tempting to start from scratch because it's a blank slate. Like I can build completely from scratch, but that's actually not very brain friendly. I agree with past me. Two, design the rest with you in mind. <laughs> Hang on. Current you, not future you. If you're anything like me, future you is awesome and can run a 5K between making breakfast for their family and going to work. What about current you? Yeah, this is in the book too. <laughs> Do you like to sleep in? Do you like to make breakfast? Are you more likely to work out in the morning or the evening? Do you need to tackle mentally challenging tasks before your meds wear off? How much alone time do you need? How long can you go without it before you start canceling on people? <laughs> helpful things to take into consideration. Three, give yourself plenty of white space in your schedule. Remember, transitions will probably take longer at first because you're not used to your new routines yet. Ooh, I forgot to do that one. Thanks, past me. That's a really good one. I forgot about that. Yeah, if you're trying to set up new routines, give yourself some time to transition because until it's more automatic, it is going to take longer for you to transition between one habit and the next. And if you don't give yourself that time, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna wake up, you're gonna do the first thing, and then you're gonna go to do the second thing, but it's gonna take so long that now you either can't do that second thing or third thing, or you're gonna have to skip something else, which kind of defeats the purpose of trying to build a routine. So yeah, oh man, that's, nope, that's good advice, okay. So set yourself up for success. Give yourself extra time between your new routines in case one takes longer than you expect. Personally, while I'm adjusting to my new schedule of working on the show full time, I'm giving myself a full hour between my morning and afternoon routines and then a couple hours before bed so that if work runs long, I still get to sleep. If leaving extra time in your schedule isn't an option for you, parents. That was gonna be my next question. <laughs> but what if I don't have time to do that? Person with a new job, persons with two jobs, or if transitions are especially difficult for you, you can speed up the process of setting those new routines and reduce the transition time between them by mentally walking through your new routines a few times before you ah. need to start using them. Imagine each part of the task and then imagine how you'll move on to the next one. You can do this as slowly or as quickly as you like. Just make sure you don't skip any steps to get the full effect. Write the new routines down. Um, that's, well, I maybe I am getting to that, but that's the other way to do it is to do it on a checklist so you don't have to remember what you're doing next. You can transition a little bit easier, but that might be uh -huh, what I'm about to say. So never mind. There's a surprising amount that will suddenly not be automatic when you go through big life changes. Again, speaking from experience. Once you're used to your routines, your brain will usually remind you what's next. Until then, you'll probably need some help. So you need to have a way of keeping yourself on track. Oh, the clipboard. I didn't do this on purpose, but Brendan Mahan of ADHD Essentials recently talked about putting your to-do list or routine list, whatever it is, on a clipboard because it makes it feel more official and it also gives you a place to stick your pen. I, I need a clipboard. To-do. Order a clipboard. 
Put it in your schedule. Create a habit tracker. Sticker chart. Use an app like TimeTune or Brilly. Yes, I know it's supposed to be for kids. I don't care. It works. Oh, that's something. So Brilly has an adult version now. I talked about Brilly a bunch on the channel and they were like, yeah, we would love to do an adult version. And I think they actually did come out with one. So, so I'll link to that in the description if you want to try the adult version of Brilly. There's absolutely nothing wrong with parenting yourself. Five, if at all humanly possible, wait until you're used to your new routine before adding in stuff that you've never done before. <laughs> new habits are a lot harder to stick to. That's a whole other episode. So give yourself some time to adjust to your new routine before you take on that challenge. Going through big changes is not the time to try and create your perfect life. Though yes, I too am tempted to do all the things I've ever wanted to do now that I am doing this full time. Not me just sitting here going, oh, you know what I could do while I'm on maternity leave? Learn to bake. <laughs> but I know if I want to create new habits that last longer than five days, it'll be a lot easier if I have solid routines in place to plug them into. Six, manage your stress levels. Change, even good change, is stressful. Expect small, unexpected changes to affect you more than usual right now because they're not really small changes. They're peaks on a mountain of giant changes. Sometimes they're going to push you over the meltdown line. So if you mm -hmm. find yourself crying in the middle of a grocery store because they no longer carry your mm -hmm. favorite ice cream, it's totally normal. Is what my psychiatrist told me. <laughs> that totally happened. After I moved out to Seattle and COVID shut everything down and then my mom died and there was just so much going on that my partner came home with turkey breast for Thanksgiving and I lost my absolute shit. Like I melted down because it wasn't the full on turkey that I was used to having for Thanksgiving. It, it, it just that was it. That was enough to push me over the edge. The more change we've got going on, the more disruptions, the more the more stress that we're experiencing, the less it takes to push us over the edge. So be patient with yourself. If you need a little extra TLC right now, that's okay. Ask a friend for support. Mail yourself a care package. Make time for bubble baths or a massage. Play volleyball. Whatever helps you relax. That was one of the things that I did um, for myself as I was going through all the changes that come with being a, a mom or preparing to be a mom, there is a, a service that will deliver a care package to you every month that's based on where you're at in that pregnancy. It was really cool. Like right when I was starting to, to get a little bit bigger, they sent me belly oil and they sent me chamomile tea. They sent me something with ginger in it for like the first trimester when I had nausea. It's been really nice to get something from, it's called a bump box. Mailing myself a care package would take probably more executive function, more effort than, than I have to give right now now, but getting a care package every month that somebody else put together has been fantastic. Seven, acknowledge your achievements. It can be really easy when you're adjusting to a new routine to only see the stuff you didn't get to. Check out all the stuff you did. Even little things like getting to work on time that you might otherwise take for granted are a huge victory when you did it with a new routine. Carolyn and I just talked about this in the video that we did uh, talking about friendships. Start counting your wins. Pay attention to your wins. Don't just pay attention to what you did wrong. Honestly, our brains are gonna naturally do that anyway. So pay attention to what, what you did well. Like, what are your wins? And that can just be, I did it, I showed up. <laughs> so go, get yourself some Froyo. I want Froyo. And finally, eat. Tweak as necessary. If anyone gets all of their routines right on their first try, I'm gonna be very annoyed. Impressed, <laughs> but annoyed. It's totally normal for it to take some trial and error to figure out what works for you. So expect that things will go wrong and you will need to make adjustments. Doesn't mean you're doing something wrong, it's part of the process. I'm currently in the process of doing that myself. You do the best you can when you set it up, but sometimes you don't know what doesn't work until you try it. And honestly, even once you get your new routine set, things will still totally mess with them. A road trip, a new project, the holidays, a new romance, <laughs> <laughs> a new pet? Or even just an unexpected phone call in the middle of your day will sometimes totally mess with your new routines. And that's okay. We will rebuild. Ah. I needed this today. <laughs> Aww. 
That's it for this week. Next time, I will be talking about how to get new habits to stick, which means this one will probably be back. So we should probably give her a name. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that never happened. I did. I do have this somewhere, like this this puppet character. I, I kept all the stuff, and then I've been through several moves. It might be somewhere in my garage. I might have to reinvent her, but this was a really fun video. I'm glad that I watched it. I hope, uh, I hope it was worth watching again. If you have anything to add about rebuilding routines, let me know in the comments below. And if I, if I didn't do that habits video, I think I should. Huge big thank you hugs to my brain advocates and all my Patreon brains for making it possible for me to spend way too much time playing with dominoes. I really love this job. Usually. If you like these types of videos, let us know in the comments below and tell us which episode we should do next.